want to make this video. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank. And today we're going to be talking about the CR10 Smart, Creality's new semi-flagship incorporating a lot of new technology that they've been trying to roll out and uh, test. Now initially I had filmed a whole build for unboxing and first impression video, but I'm going to ditch that for the sake that there's already a couple videos like that out there. If you want to see more about that, go check out 3D Printing Nerd, Teaching Tech, Emily the Engineer. I'll link all of those down below and I am going to reference a few of those videos in this video. Now first off, don't get me wrong, I do want to say this is a good printer once you get it working. And that's going to be the highlight of this video is how hard it was to get this thing to actually print out a box. Now, I've been 3D printing for a little while now. I'm not the master, I'm not the best, but I've built over probably 25 different types and kinds of printers, calibrated them all, and gotten some pretty good prints out of some of them. And I have never struggled harder to get a viable, even decent print out of a printer until I built this thing. And if I had trouble like that out of box, what's a newbie gonna face? Now, if you really wanna see the depths of riding that struggle bus, go to check out Teaching Tech's video because he had to even disassemble the entire bed just to get this thing level and working. Now, I think a lot of people who have had this printer and have been in the whole scene for a little while can agree this is more of Creality rushing things and letting us test the new features. This didn't go through the proper R&D that it needed to. It has issues out of box and it's not our job to test that out. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to build. It's very simple to assemble. Creality is very good with that. This is very similar to the CR-10S Pro V2 or really any CR-10 in that kind of in that instance. But there's just some bolts that bolt this gantry up. You plug in a wire, you put these braces on the back, you plug in some other things and you're ready to go. But that's when the problem starts. Now this printer is supposed to feature a new type of levelless able system where there's a little sensor inside the head itself that kind of acts as the easy able depending on where the nozzle is to the bed. There's no BL touch that actually pops out but the bed itself was already loose right out of the box. And for some reason, even adjusting the eccentric nuts just wasn't quite doing it for me. And a lot of people don't even know that you have to do that. I have about two hours of footage of me just messing with this printer, trying to get that first layer and that first level to work. And even if I could get that first level to work, very quickly after that, the print came off or it clogged or it broke or something else went wrong. Right out of the box, unfortunately, we had one failure, two failure, and I was finally able to print out a little fighter jet fulcrum thing that almost looks like a model kit. And even that didn't really come out the best and one of the sides lifted up unfortunately. But after that, I decided to swap out the stock filament that usually comes with this printer because sometimes it's not really the best. The upside of this video is that I started using Gyo 3D print filament and this is basically rebranded Sunlu. I believe there's Sunlu even in their name, but J-A-Y-O, this stuff printed great. I have about two or three rolls of this. I not only tested it on this printer once I was able to get the printer working, but I tested it on a few others and it prints just like Sunlu PLA, which is basically what I use on most of my props. So if you guys see this on Amazon, I think that's where you can get it. Um, I'll definitely try to link some of this down below as well. This filament was really good, very easy to use, and I do recommend this. But even after swapping that filament, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, really quick failures. And I finally was able to get one of the little prints out. It's a little print place T-Rex. He's actually kind of cute, but that was my next successful print after over 10 failures. Then I tried slicing my own G-code using the instructions that they give you, which if you read through the G-code, Teaching Tech explains this, and I didn't even realize it because I'm not that parsed in G-code. They don't even tell the G-code that they give you to put in Acura if you're not using Creality Slicer, doesn't even tell the system to probe the bed first before a print. So there's no active mesh leveling going on with the printer while you're printing. So what the heck's the point of the auto level? Bruh. Even those prints unfortunately failed, it had a little bit of a clog, and then it just started going spaghetti. Finally, I was able to get a good print off of this thing. I was able to print this, but like I said, three day print, very high quality. I adjusted and tightened everything I could. Unfortunately, there still was a little bit of Z banding and wobble, but honestly, sending it for that long, I'm actually pretty impressed with how it came out. Unfortunately, it's just a little too small for my head, so that's my fault. Printer was running for a good straight five, five and a half days. No issues, no uh, problems, but again, the road I had to take to get there 
was just not something you should run into nowadays with a $500 printer out of box. Not when printers like the CR-10S Pro V2 are just $100 more or something like the Solval SV03 is actually cheaper than this printer and bigger, but I do recommend you staying away from the SV04 while they still work out a lot of bugs in that thing too. Unfortunately, this just seems to be a causality of trying to throw too much new technology at a printer without testing it properly. There's so many good ideas here. I have seen that auto, uh, the levelless bed system work. It has a Z synchronization kit. It has uh, Z braces. It has an all new extruder that broke almost immediately when Emily the engineer started using it. It's a cool plastic lever system that is kind of neat, but it also runs into the problem of when you have to do a filament runout detection, it doesn't auto retract the filament. So a whole other cavalcade of issues get ran into here. And they're still using a cheap, not so good white Bowden tube that on a hot end system like this will eventually back out. Just start using the Capricorn blue system. They're, why? Like, why are we still using this? It's 2021. Unfortunately, I know this video might upset Creality, but it's something they need to fix. It's not that good of a printer. There's so many missed opportunities here with it. And they even have a really cool little tool tray that's hidden inside the printer. And it took me like four hours to find. And I wish I was kidding. And I thought they didn't give me tools with the printer, but it's there and it's so nice, but just, it doesn't make up for the other atrocities on the printer, unfortunately. If you guys do have this printer and you're having problems leveling the bed, there is a whole Reddit forum dedicated to basically rebuilding the bed leveling system, adjusting it with shims and spacers and all this fun stuff. So I'll link that down below to hopefully help you guys out if you already have this printer. And again, I'm not saying it's a bad printer if you can get it to work. This thing is a pretty standard CR-10. It's a good size. It has a good footprint. It's an all-in-one design. It has silent boards, but not silent fans. Weird. So if you can get it to work, good. It should definitely pump out some great prints for you. I don't have a problem with it in that aspect, but as a newbie goes, it is appealing. It has all this technology for $500 but it, right now it just isn't worth it. They need to work out some bugs. Maybe the CR10 V2, uh, Smart or Smart V2 or whatever the heck they decide to name it. Maybe that will come out soon once they see all these videos um, about just the small issues or kind of glaring big issues in the printer and the next iteration or rendition of it will be much better. But that just about does it for this video, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or you have this printer too and you've run into similar issues or maybe you've had no issues at all, please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on it. Maybe recommend some other printers around that price point. Maybe you got this, returned it, got printer B instead. I'd really like to know your thoughts and opinions on it. Maybe you've seen some videos that I haven't been able to find or a Reddit form that I haven't seen or a Facebook post. So please let me know down below. But that's a wrap for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. And well, sorry.